What's going on Linear Algebra Bros? Welcome to another video here. Um, in this video what we're going to do is find vector and parametric equations of the plane in 3 space that passes through the origin and is orthogonal to 3, 1, negative 6. Okay, so we want to assume that that right there is are, are the components of a vector, uh, say V. Alright, um, so how, how are we going to do this? Okay, well uh, first of all uh, it does say that it passes through the origin, all right, and that is going to provide us point p sub zero, which we can write out the ordered triple for that since it's the origin. All values in the ordered triple will be zero. Um, in terms of you know vector equations, uh, you know this would also serve as an x sub zero vector. Um, but here's kind of the interesting uh, second condition here is that our plane has to be orthogonal to this vector 3, 1, negative 6. So that said, I definitely think a diagram is in order. So over here I'm going to draw my famous magic carpet plane. Well, probably not famous yet, but it will be eventually. And in this plane, I'm going to stick the uh, origin in it, all right, um, or, or put the vector or point uh, zero comma zero comma zero in it. Uh, I guess I'll put it there, and that's going to be vector x sub zero or p sub zero, whichever you prefer, and it has the component zero comma zero comma zero. Um, so this plane has to be perpendicular to a vector having components 3, 1, negative 6. Okay, that's what orthogonal means. Right, orthogonal means perpendicular to the object. Uh, so what I'm going to do is draw um, a vector v having these components in such a way that it's perpendicular to this plane. Alright, let's assume that's the vector v, which has components 3, 1, and negative 6. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this problem is going to require us having um, a couple of other things to, to help us construct the parametric uh, equations uh, and vector equations, of course. So uh, let's talk about what we're going to need in order to do this. All right, well, if you look on uh, page one, okay, we will need uh, the vector x sub zero which is doubling up as p sub zero. It has the uh, component zero comma zero comma zero. In other words, it's the zero vector. Um, but we also need vectors v sub one and v sub two. Now, the thing about vectors uh, v sub one and v sub two is that they should both be parallel to the plane, but also non-collinear. So they have to point in different directions. Alright, so um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and insert those into the magic uh, flying carpet plane over to the right. Um, just to keep the diagram nice and clean, I'm going to attach the initial points of each of these two vectors uh, to the initial point of the vector v. Alright, so uh, keep in mind v1 and v2 have to be parallel to the plane. If we wanted to, we can put them in the plane itself, which I think that that's handy here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a vector in this direction, call that v sub 1, and then another vector in a different direction, and call that v sub 2. All right. <coughs> so obviously, the components of v sub 1 and v sub 2 are not provided for us, but we are going to need the components of, you guessed it, v sub 1 and v sub 2. So uh, here's really the crux of the problem now. Um, Keep in mind that v sub 1, v sub 2 being in the plane and the plane being uh, orthogonal or perpendicular to the vector 3, 1, negative 6 means that both the vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2 have to naturally be perpendicular or orthogonal to this vector v. So v sub 1 is going to be orthogonal to v and so is v sub 2. So even though we don't know the components of v sub 1 or v sub 2, uh, we have some guidance as to how we could construct them. So basically, we have to construct the components of both the vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2 
uh, so that it, satisf it satisfies the criterion of them both being perpendicular or orthogonal to the vector v. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're going to have to figure out uh, v sub 1's components and v sub 2's components, and we've got to make sure that they are uh, such that um, when we dot them with the vector v, that the dot product becomes 0. Okay, so we should have the vector v dotted with v sub 1 giving us 0, and the vector v dotted with v sub 2 equaling 0. My claim is that a combination of components for v sub 1 that will satisfy this condition are 2, 0, and 1. So I'm going to say let v sub 1 equal parentheses 2, comma 0, comma 1. All right? What we'll do is check that before we proceed. And what we'll do to check this is just dot it with the vector v. All right, so the vector v has components 3, 1, and negative 6. And we're going to dot that with 2, 0, 1. And we're going to see what this comes out to be. All right, keep in mind we can multiply corresponding components and then find the sum of all those products. We're going to have 3 times 2 plus 1 times 0 plus negative 6 times 1. In other words, 6 plus 0 minus 6, and of course that gives us 0. So we can use 2, 0, 1 as the components of our vector v sub 1. Now as for v sub 2, my claim is that you can use these as the components, 0, comma 6, comma 1. Um, I want you to note that v sub 2's components are not a scalar multiple of v sub 1's components. Um, there would be an issue with that, in fact, if the components of v sub 2 were a scalar multiple of v sub 1, that would mean that v sub 1 and v sub 2 are collinear. They would lie along the same line. Um, and we can't have that when we form the vector and parametric equations for a plane. All right, they have to be pointing in different directions. Okay. Um, so with that said, I would like to check that this satisfies the criterion. What I'm going to do is take 3, 1, negative 6 again and dot it with 0, 6, and 1. What we'll have is 3 times 0 plus 1 times 6 plus negative 6 times 1. In other words, 0 plus 6 minus 6, and we get 0. Now, I'll be honest, uh, the components for both the vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2 were found by a little bit of trial and error. Uh, once we get to the cross product, we'll have more of a science or scientific way of finding out the components of v sub 1 and v sub 2. Um, but here it was just done by trial and error. So that said, you know, when you choose your components of v sub 1 and v sub 2, which, by the way, these two vectors components are not unique. Um, there are different combinations of components that we can use. And if you have time, I encourage you to try and find a different pair of vectors, v1 and v2, that meet the criterion here. Um, but anyway, uh, when you do select your vectors v1 and v2, you want to make sure that they are not scalar multiples of one another. Uh, which guarantees that they point in different directions and you're allowed to uh, move forward uh, with the rest of the problem um, so long as that happens. And of course, you know, you want to make sure that each of the two vectors uh, is perpendicular to the vector v. Okay, so that's really the hardest part uh, of this entire problem, uh, finding the vectors v1 and v2. Uh, now what we're going to do is move on to constructing the actual equations. Uh, the first equation is going to be for a vector equation. I'll box that in. And generically speaking, the vector x can be written as x comma y comma z. And we're going to set that equal to the sum of x sub 0, which is the 0 vector, 0 comma 0 comma 0, being added to a scalar multiple t sub 1 times the vector v sub 1's components, 
2 comma 0 comma 1 and that being added to a different scalar multiple call it t sub 2 times the components of the vector v sub 2 0 comma 6 comma 1 so this would be the vector equation for the plane it's not unique because you could have a different combination of vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2 but we will stick with this one and move on to parametric equations alright what this amounts to is basically cleaning up the right hand side of the vector equation uh, in other words you want to condense it down into a single vector or a single ordered triple so I'll take you through some of those steps let's write xyz is equal to and I'll keep the zero vector as is right there um, but now what I'm gonna do is multiply in the scalars t sub 1 and t sub 2 so essentially we distribute them uh, to each of the components of the corresponding vector so that this expression or this vector now becomes 2 t sub 1 comma 0 comma t sub 1 and then the, set, the third vector here becomes 0 comma 6 t sub 2 comma t sub 2 now what we'll do is go ahead and add all three corresponding uh, components x comma y comma z on the left equals okay if you add the first component of each of the three vectors we're gonna have 0 plus 2 t1 plus 0 so the first component is gonna be 2 t sub 1 if you add the second component of each vector we're gonna get 6 t sub 2 and then if you add the third component of each of the three vectors you're going to get t sub 1 plus t sub 2 um, last but not least we'll go ahead and equate corresponding components uh, between the two vectors x y and z and 2 t1 6 t2 comma t1 plus t2 that is we're gonna set x equal to 2 t sub 1 we're gonna set y equal to 6 t sub 2 and then we're gonna set z equal to t sub 1 plus t sub 2 and those would be our parametric equations and that's where the pain and torture I'm sorry the fun and excitement for this problem ends of course if you have any questions about anything for this video feel free to reach out to me otherwise I uh, congratulate you and thank you for enduring an almost 15 minute long video it is kind of one of the longer problems but um, it's uh, how we get down to business or something like this um, and that's it so I'm gonna sign off right now and say and salute all my linear algebras I look forward to seeing you next time thank you